Good afternoon, judges. We are Team Seizure from Bukit Panjang Government High School. I'm Jason, and there's Samuel and Keith. So, so for like the first film, um, our goal is to start from like the T, like the top right top, and then end in like the, the red line by line tracking control. Um, then in field two, we need to, we are, we are, we will try to deposit like the cube, but uh, while also like ending at the red line. Like uh, sorry, Keith. Uh, I think there's a lot of wind in your background. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. No worries. Um, uh, yeah, okay, and yeah, uh, next slide. Um, okay, then for our board, um, we had three light, uh, light sensors. We have one in the center facing the front, and this light sensor is to like detect what color the ball is. Um, and then we have another two light sensors that are placed at the side of the one in the middle and they are one CM above the ground. They are pointed down and this is to detect the line to help it um, like line track. Well, and it can also detect the silver line and the red line and the green line. Um, and then we have the large motor which um, has high torque to move over like the speed bumps easily. Um, and then we have the trank threads. They increase the grip on the ground and then they also help us uh, cross over the speed bumps more easily. Okay, and then this is the depositing mechanism. So it's sort of like a lever in a sense, like it works a bit like a catapult also. So when you, okay, so the cube will be preloaded into the mechanism and then it, the, the bot will reverse into the wall of the zone where we need to deposit the cube. And then it, because of this, it will push the, push the yellow labels backwards and then the cube will be pushed out into uh, the zone. Um, and then these are some of our um, learning experiences. Okay, so now it's on to programming. So there's a short summary on how the line tracking works for us, right? Because I know it is quite intensive in, our, in EV3. So first of all, we need to use both sensors to pick up RGB values because black and white, they have different values, right? And throughout the field, there are different lighting values. So this affects everything. And we need to measure these values first. Um, then they will calibrate these values. It's calibrated through an equation before being in, uh, transferred to a final equation. And since black reflects less light than white, so we made it so that black will have a light reading of zero, while white will have a light reading of one, right? So this will allow the bot to determine why it's black and why it's white, and this will accurately line track. So by using 100 multiplied by the error between the color sensor's reading, it's able to control the steering of how the bot will travel during the line track, and it will not go off course. Next slide. So like I said before, it stores the value of the RGB in three variables. However, this is only for the right sensor because we are using two sensors. So there'll be six variables in total. And yeah, this will store the values. Next slide. Oh, and yeah, I mentioned that before that RGB block was actually not part of EV3 Mindstorm. So we had to use custom coded ones because uh, the EV3 Mindstorm block was not accurate enough to do so. So we went to go and install some custom code. Yeah, next slide. So by going through this equation, it's able to obtain a result very, uh, a result very close to either zero or one. This enables the robot to understand why it's white and black. After calibrating the values of each sensor, the robot can now accurately detect why it's black and white. However, in the scenario of an intersection, the robot still doesn't know what to do. So by using the comparison block here, uh, 0 0.6, basically this block tells the robot to compare whether the reading is below 0 0.6 or not. If it is below 0 0.6, like I said before, because it detects black, right? So black, the reading from black will be zero and therefore will be zero, lesser than 0 0.6 and it's able to proceed to the next block. If it is not, it will be rejected and it will stop there and it will continue line tracking. Next slide. So like I said before, and now they compare the both values. If both values are equal, which means to say both are detecting black. So it will tell the robot, hey, you're at an intersection. It's time to do the next block which is what leads to the next logic loop there. And this is the line track. So basically it takes the values from uh, the green 
colors and from the green value because it will be detecting green later on so it doesn't have to switch back and forth between values so it's more convenient for the robot to do so so by using this equation it's able to control the steering it needs to be multiplied by a significant coefficient because the error itself is actually too small to control the steering so it needs to be multiplied by a bigger coefficient yeah so basically uh we're going to show the whole video because the video is quite long so we just showed some photos. So basically, it's able to cross that fight gap, even though it doesn't have a black line to follow. This is because, uh, like I said before, white has a value of 1. And therefore, uh, using that equation from before, it takes 1 minus 1, and you get 0. 0 multiplied by whatever coefficient, it will become 0. And when the direction or the degree becomes 0, it will move straight, and therefore allow it to cross that gap. Um, it also allows it to cross the intersection there. As you can see, the robot uh, at the initial image near the circle will move forward detecting double black and it will move backward detecting the green square and it will move towards the right side. And my partner here will uh, under explain how the green square detection will work soon. Uh, here's a GI, yeah. So this one also works. Here's a, another example of uh, intersection and green square detection. And this is a GIF. Uh, it started a little too prematurely, so yeah, so it does the thing. Moves back, that's a U-turn. Yeah. Yeah, next slide. Now, Jason. So in the case of both sensors detecting black, it will lead to the following quotes as you can see here. So firstly, it moves back in anticipation for a green square or two green squares. So when it detects double green, it does a full U-turn as you saw in the previous GIF. Then if port, port 1 would be the right color sensor, whereas port 2 is the left color sensor. So over here, you can see that it turns right, it turns left, or it moves in front depending on what case it senses. So over here, you have the detection for red. And this is for field two. So detection for silver, basically because uh, due to the lack of time, we decided that we would just uh, hard code it to make it through the rescue field and get points through line tracking instead of uh, doing the evacuation zone. So you can see the code here. So we detected silver and all the silver RGB values would be higher than white, which is how we detected it. So the lessons we learned were time management as in our previous competition, we, uh, we rushed the filming last minute and as such, we, we didn't have time to really film properly. So our videos were invalid. Uh, but at least this time, we managed to film videos with the proper equipment in place so that we could at least have a valid video to submit. We also uh, enhanced our knowledge of EV3 programming, uh, which will be helpful to us for next competitions. Thank you. Thank you.